Hey y'all, welcome back to Blackmore Barbecue. Today it's steak night. I've got two dry aged ribeyes that have been dipped in beef tallow and cold smoked. I didn't do this myself. I got them from a place in Thorndale, a butcher shop. It's kind of what he's known for, giving them a shot. I'm pretty excited about this. Let's get to it. Dry aged steaks pretty much as elite as a steak can get. These bad boys have been dry aged for 47 days. The steak on my right, your left, is actually balsamic brined before that whole process. As you can see, both of these steaks are well marbled and that's crucial in the dry aging process. The first 21 to 28 days, the steak isn't really taking on any additional flavor, it's just losing moisture and becoming more tender. You get that nutty kind of umptious other flavor after the 28 day period. I typically like to have my steaks between the 45 and 60 day period. Today I'm gonna season these steaks with some Perini Ranch steak rub. I got these from Goodstock. It's a butcher shop by Nolan Ryan. This is basically just fancy salt, pepper, garlic, but it's pretty damn good. I'm gonna go on pretty heavy right here because it's tasty. The important thing is we wanna keep our flavor profiles very simple because we don't wanna overpower the funk we're gonna get from the dry age. It's been about 15 minutes and it's important to note that almost no moisture has been drawn out of the steak. That's because we've lost moisture already in the dry aging process. I went ahead and cut off some of the pellicle that was left on these and I'm gonna use that to grease my grill grates outside. Today I'm cooking on the PK charcoal grill with some grill grates on top. I've got a hardwood fire of mesquite and lump charcoal going in the bottom. These grill grates temped out at about 700 degrees. I recommend you try this tip right here. I've taken some of the fat we trimmed off and rubbing my grill grates down with this. It smells great and it helps keep your meat from sticking. We're going on with our steaks now. This is the regular dry age. And this is the balsamic. I'm gonna stick a little toothpick in the balsamic for reference, just so we don't forget. Well, I don't forget. Damn, can you smell that? An important thing to remember is dry aged steaks have less moisture. That means they're gonna cook a lot faster. So I'm not even gonna close the grill lid on this cook. I'm cooking over a 700 degree fire, so I'm pretty much giving these steaks one minute, then a rotate for the good crosshatch pattern. One minute flip, one minute rotate, then I'm gonna raise them up on a raised rack to finish them off until they're at the perfect 125 to 130 temperature range. Let's go ahead and give these a flip. That is what I'm talking about. Save our toothpick for Mr. Balsamic. Let's do a quick temperature check. I'm not expecting it to be close, but yep. 90, 95. So now I'm gonna add, put these steaks on a raised rack and we'll close the lid for just a minute to kind of let them coast to the finish line after a hard sprint. Nothing I would know much about. And for good measure, we'll give them just a pat of some Irish butter to melt over the top. All right, it's been probably two minutes since we threw the butter on. One twenty-nine. That sounds about right to me. As you can see, right here, we get a high reading on the thermometer. We reprobe and we get a much lower reading. That first reading was probably just a fat pocket, and that can sometimes give you a false reading that's much higher than you would think. Always double check. There we go. 128, 129, 130. Perfect. Let's pull these guys off, give them about four or five minutes to rest while we get the camera set up, and let's eat. Now it's my favorite part of the video where I get to eat some steak. 
This is our standard, well, this is our non-balsamic brine. Again, this is a dry aged steak that was in beef tallow and cold smoked. This steak is also all that, plus it was brined and balsamic. Pretty crazy stuff. Real quick before I slice into these, I wanted to thank our sponsor for this video. My good friend Ryan Buck, he came into town and gave me the excuse to do this. And Lagavulin because it's the only scotch I had in the house. All right, let's start with this Spinalis. This is the standard steak. Yep, nice medium to medium rare. I love this knife by Dow Strong. It is a monster. That will do it for me. I'm going to take a bite of this Spinalis. Mmm! Hot damn, that's good. I don't know if this is the cold smoke or it's the mesquite fire that we cooked over, but it's got that kind of buttery, salty, beefy smoke. It's this is a very good. This is what this is the epitome of a charcoal grilled steak at home. I take this ten at ten times out of ten. Try this balsamic toothpick for safety. Cut right off the bone. Spinalis. Oh, that one got away from me. Nice and medium. This one actually looks like it's got, you can see where that brine kind of, you can see where that brine kind of got into the meat. This would be pretty, it's a little off-putting. Let's see what this bad boy tastes like. Dang, I'm gonna, hold up. I've gotta verify my results. The smoke and kind of those salty, peppery notes from the traditional steak are a little more muted in this one, but you definitely get the finish of that balsamic vinaigrette. And it's very good, it's different, it's very good. I'm usually, I'm gonna go for the more traditional steak, but I might be trying a balsamic brine with just a regular cut I get from the grocery store in the future. That's pretty damn good. It's tender. It's got that texture almost like a filet. It's juicy. It looks kind of weird because of that brine. But damn it, eat good, son. I'll tell you what. Guys, thanks for watching my channel. Like, subscribe, comment. Come at me on Twitter. Tell me if I messed up or did okay. See you next time. Thanks.